Hello everybody and welcome to another commentary here. We are at MetLife Stadium 2019. This is a great show from last weekend. We are in East Rutherford, New Jersey with a very special first stadium show of the second quarter here in 2019. We've got a great lineup set for you guys and let's get in to the competition. We are here in the first round of racing here at MetLife Stadium. We have in the near lane Matt Cody in Iron Warrior. He is taking on Scott Hartsock in Gunslinger. The first time that this driver, Matt Cody in the near lane, has been in the stadium in three years and Scott Hartsock making his first ever MetLife Stadium appearance. It's the first time I actually ever saw him in a show since the World Finals back in, I believe, 2011. It's been a while, and man, it was awesome to see him. But let's get into this racing competition. It's going to be a beautiful night. No drops of rain in the forecast. Let's go racing. Matt Cody has been in arenas each of the last three years, and he spins out in the turn, and it's going to be all Scott Hartsock going in to the winner's circle. Matt Cody just built a brand new chassis for this truck. It is a beautiful chassis. It is really beautiful. Handmade and, well, it didn't fare very well in the first round of racing here today, but we still got two other competitions that he could show it off in. The next race here in round one in the far lane, you have Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger, and in the near lane is Kraken driven by Nick Pagliarulo. This is going to be a race that is heavily aimed at Ryan Anderson. This is going to be what should be an easy race for Ryan Anderson. Ryan Anderson carrying the lead to the final turn, and it's going to be donut time for Kraken as Silva Digger pulls her with an easy victory as Nick Pagnarulo spun out in the turn. Great, a great race between these two, but Ryan Anderson continues to be smooth in this 2019 racing track. Next up here on the front line, we have Jimmy Creighton and Bounty Hunter taking on Cody Saltier in his first stadium race of 2019. This is his first time he has ever driven on this track. Jimmy Creighton, your defending racing world finals champion. Let's go green. A very close race going to the final turn, but Cody Saucier with a little bobble is going to cost him the race, and Jimmy Creighton is moving on to the next round, and he almost did what he did in the World Finals, doing a backflip, but he was able to correct it just in time. So Jimmy Creighton will move on to the next round of racing here at MetLife Stadium. Round one is off to a great start. We are almost completed here. 
that this is going to be a battle for the ages. In the near lane, we have Tyler, Meninga, and Gravedigger. And in the far lane, we have the beautiful Fire Max D, driven by Tom Metz. It is a Max D Gravedigger matchup right here in the first round. This is going to be one exciting race. Tom Metz open for big things here in MetLife. But he's got to go through Tyler Menninger first. But Tyler Menninger pulls ahead and knocks down Tom Mentz. And Tom, with some smoke billowing out of the exhaust, it turns out that he blew his engine. He is not going to make it back until the freestyle competition. So Tom Mentz in Max D, a disappointing blow in the first round of racing. But Tyler Menninger pulling out a huge win over Tom Mentz here. It seems like truck problems, though, were the reason for the end of Tom Mentz's racing night. This is another great race between two drivers who have been battling against each other all year long in the Blue Tour. It's Camden Murphy and the Bakugan Dragonoid taking on Cynthia Gautier in Monster Mutt Dalmatian. Kim and Murphy got the whole shot. He's ahead by a truck length after the first jump. And it seems to be all Camden Murphy right now as he is blowing away this win. Cynthia Gautier tried to make up some ground but did way too much trying to get that win. And it's going to be Camden Murphy easing himself in to the next round of racing. Next up is the last race of round number one in the farther with Mike Thompson and Torres taking on Don Creighton and Scarlet Bandit. Two drivers who are not really known for their racing capabilities, which means that this should probably be a fun race. Mike Thompson, this is his first show since Minneapolis at the end of 2017, so a big adjustment for him being down here, back out here, grabbing this beautiful classic Taurus. Dawn Creighton and Scarlet Bandit give an attack to the rear steering. A close finish, but it's Dawn Creighton and Scarlet Bandit moving on to round number two. Mike Thompson, that beautiful Taurus, one of the first monster jam trucks to ever even exist. But now we're in the second round of racing. Ryan Dishman and Saigon Shaker and Matt Pagliulo and Jester got by runs into the second round from numbers picked at the driver's meeting. So Matt Pagliulo is in your near lane in that beautiful purple Jester. It's the last show of this purple Jester effort, taking on Scott Hartsock in Gunslinger. Matt Pagliulo would love to knock down the veteran here in the second round of racing. But Scott Hartside pulling ahead at the last minute and a win by a truck length here in MetLife Stadium. A huge win for Scott Hartside in Gunslinger. Matt Pagliulo, we will see him again in the two-wheel competition and in freestyle. But Scott Hartside moving all the way to the semifinal round. And he will take on the winner of this race, which is between two heavyweight racing drivers. In the far lane is Jimmy Creighton and Bounty Hunter taking on Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger. A rematch from the third round of racing in the World Finals this year. This is going to be a great race. Ryan Anderson would love nothing more than to beat Jimmy Creighton. He has lost two World Finals races to Jimmy in his career. He would love to get this win. And indeed he will. He's going to barely edge ahead. A very close finish. He got a little wild there at the end, but it's Jimmy Creighton not being able to pull ahead with Son of a Digger getting the spot in the semifinals against Scott Hartsock. So Jimmy Creighton still a nice night of racing. He put up a good fight against Ryan Anderson. The next race here in round two is between Saigon Shakers, Ryan Dishroon. He was the fastest driver in practice, going against Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger.
Wild Edition has been secretly one of the top drivers in racing this year. He has been so good, and we will see if we can keep that up. A close race to the finish, but it's Tyler Meninga by half a truck length beating Saigon Shaker. He is moving on to the semifinals. A great race. Tyler Meninga seems to be stuck at the backflip ramp. And on the last race of round number two, it's between Dawn Creighton and Scarlet Bandit and the Bakugan Dragonoid, Camden Murphy, who has been killing it all year long. We are going green here. Camden Murphy has had one spectacular year in racing. He has six overall racing wins this year, which is really a spectacular time. And he's going to make another bid for that tonight. It's almost three truck lengths is the victory number for Camden Murphy and the Bakugan Dragonoid. Don Creighton is not going to be winning it tonight. So Kendall Murphy looking fast as always will make a push for the win tonight. But he's going to have to face another driver in this round. And the winner of this race, if he makes it that far, it's Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger and Scott Hartsack in Slinger. Scott Hartsack is the veteran here in this competition. Aside from Tom Menz, he is the most experienced driver here in this field. And he's going against the rising star in the future of Monster Jam. That'll be Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. Slinger with an edge going into that turn. But Ryan Anderson made up all the ground and into the turn. Ryan has the lead, but... He didn't get both of the front two wheels on the scent, on the jump, which means that Ryan Anderson's going to get a five-second penalty and is not going to be able to move on to the next round. Scott Hartsock in Slinger will be moving on. Next up here, the second race of the semifinal round. The winner will take on Scott Hartsock in the final round. It's Tyler Menigan and Grant Digger taking on Camden Murphy and the Bakugan Dragonoid. Two drivers who spent the beginning of their careers in arenas are now looking for the chance to shine in stadiums. Camden Murphy's proven himself already. Tyler Menigan hoping to follow in suit. And your winner is going to be Tyler Menega flying over the finish line. What a race between two of the rising stars in Monster Jam. But it's going to go to Tyler Menega in Gravedigger, who is moving on to the final round to take on Scott Hartsock. But what a night for Camden Murphy so far. A great night of racing. So we are here in the final round of racing here at MetLife Stadium 2019. This is going to be one amazing race between two top drivers in the history of Monster Jam. In the far lane, we are going to have Scott Hartsock in Slinger. He has been really smooth all night. He has gotten a little bit of luck to fall in his favor tonight, making it all the way to the final round of racing thanks to some blunders by other drivers. Scott Hartsock would love nothing more than to get this racing win here today. And in the near lane, you're going to see him plot in just a minute. He's having some problems getting out of the parking spot. Is Tyler Menega in Gravedigger. He is looking for his first ever 
Monster Jam Stadium Racing win. It will be his first major stadium racing win. If you want to count Salinas as a stadium, then that technically would count. But other than that, this would be Tyler Menega's first major stadium racing win. He has been to the final round in the World Finals and in Vegas three times, but he's never gotten the win. So this would be huge for Tyler Menega. Tyler pulling up to the line right now. This is going to be an amazing win for both of these drivers because as Mitchell Reigns just said, this would be the first stadium racing win for either of these drivers in their career. I don't really believe that because Scott Hartzog has been around for a while. But Tyler Meninga is staged. And we will see how this race goes down. You can see the green light over there on the left side of the screen behind the uh, trucks and you can also see it up on the video board. These two are ready. Who's going to win the MetLife Racing competition? Tyler Menig is going crazy right now. It's close, but it's no question about it that Tyler Menninga in Grave Digger is your racing winner. A huge win for him. He could not be any more excited about this one. What a win for Tyler, your 2019 MetLife Stadium Racing Champion. Coming out of the bed to the bone camp. Tyler Menninga, this has to feel so amazing for him. So up first here in the Monster Jam two-wheel competition, his first stadium two-wheel competition ever. This is Matt Cody in Iron Warrior. A solid first hit, a nice sky really for Iron Warrior. So what I'm gonna do officially from now on is I'm gonna judge both hits out of five and then add up the scores to make it much more fair and make it a really professional scoring set. We're not basing it all on one hit. That first hit was really solid. And the second one was okay, but not the best. So I'm going to have to give that first hit a 2.5 and the second one a 2 for a total of a 4.500 for Iron Warrior. We'll see what the actual scores are in just a minute up on the video board. But Matt Cody and Iron Warrior, I'm sure, is so happy to be a part of the show. Matt left with this brand new chassis. These drivers really looking for a huge win out here at MetLife Stadium. The two-wheel competition is a very exciting competition.
You can see on the video board, Tom Mentz trying to change the engine. It's a 3.286, so he got a little bit of a lower score than I expected. But next up here, second in the two-wheel competition is Kraken. This is Nick Pagliarulo. Nick Pagliarulo has gotten the opportunity to be in this two-wheel competition all year long. And I'm sure this is going to be good for him. Setting up to go here in the two-year competition. Not sure what he's doing. This is something we haven't really seen before. Oh, a really nice first hit for... Nick Pegley, Rulo, and Kraken. Solid. I'm going to have to give that a 3.75 for the first hit. So we'll see what his second hit can do. He has an opportunity to get some real major points. Lining up for a second hit here. Nick Pegley, Rulo, this beautiful Kraken truck is a very popular truck on the nose again and a nice stoppy for Nick Pagliarulo I'm going to have to give that a 3.5 and if my math is correct that's a 7.25 for Nick Pagliarulo and Kraken which is a really nice score for Nick hopefully should get a score around there let's see what the scores are but Nick Pagliarulo clearly has stepped up his game in the two-wheel competition this year and it's nice to see him doing just that a nice second generation driver looking to really make his mark in the sport over there you can see my good friend Dave DeAngelis Monster Jam photographer him and I have grown really close to the last two years we love to just talk about Monster Jam great guy so hi Dave for if you're watching The 6.6 .6, Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken is your leader. So next up here in the two wheel competition is Cody Saucier in Monster Energy going for a bicycle here for his first hit. It's a really good one. A nice bicycle for Cody Saucier in Monster Energy. I'm going to have to give that a 4 for his first hit. Also, you got to keep in mind creativity and doing something drivers have not done before in the competition. And a nice slap really for Cody. A really good second hit. I'm going to have to give that a 3.75, which would total up to a 7.750 for Cody Saucier. That is your score to beat from my judging. He's got to beat a 6.644 that Kraken and Nick Pagliarulo put up as well. So Cody, I'm sure, happy about a solid two-wheel run. His first stadium two-wheel run of the year. He is hoping for bigger things in freestyle. Again, you got to keep in mind uniqueness in the competition. You really want to see a driver do something that nobody else has done in the night. Doing something first will earn you a lot of points. The score coming in. It's an 8.386. Monster Energy is going to take the lead. Next up here is Cynthia Gautier in the Monster Mutt Dalmatian as she looks to take the lead away from Cody Saucier. Now she's lining up on the side of this jump. We have seen her do big things off of this this year with some really huge hits. Wow, she got vertical there, and she's going to walk it along the top of the pad. A really nicely executed hit. I'm going to have to give that a four for Cynthia Gautier. Really good first hit. She's got an opportunity to take a big lead here.
Planning up for her second hit here. Seems like she may be going for a bicycle. She is indeed. And it's not a good one. I'm going to have to get that a 1.5. That part does not count for her hit. So that would be a 5.500 for Cynthia Gauthier in the Monster Mudtown Mission, which is not enough for the lead. So we'll see what the scores are coming in. This should not take the lead. I gave it a 5.5. Scoda Beats put up by Cody Sosia with an 8.386. Cody has a solid lead right now. Should not be taken away. Cynthia Gautier is going to get a 7.342. That's very overscored for Cynthia, but it's all right. She still put up a really good run. But next up is Taurus, driven by Mike Thompson. His first two-wheel competition since 2017. We'll see what he's got in store. And again, the minimum score you can get is a one. The maximum score you can get is a five in the judging. And that is not a good hit at all, not on two wheels once, so that's going to be a one for Taurus. So basically the minimum score you can get is a one if you break on your first hit and don't do anything. A solid hit there, a little sky really, and a nice slap really as well. And he breaks the wheel right off the axle, I'm going to have to give that a 3.5, some consistent hits. So I'm going to give that a 4.500 overall. Not the best of runs. His first hit was not that good, which is what cost him some extra points. So Torres and Mike Thompson really did a nice job there, though. Shouldn't take the lead, but he certainly got the fans excited. You can see he just broke it right off the axle. So the score for Mike Thompson is a 5.897, a nice score for him. Next up here we have Jimmy Creighton in Bounty Hunter as he looks to put himself over the top and get a win here in the two-wheel competition. Not the best of first hits for Jimmy Creighton, I'm going to have to give that a 2 for the Bounty Hunter machine. Means that the max score he can get is a seven, which is disappointing. So he should not take the lead just because that first hit was not very good. Up on the front two wheels of Jimmy Creighton. A great move, and wow, a wild ride for Jimmy Creedon. I'm going to have to give that a 4.75, which would put him at a 6.75 for the score, which is probably not what he's going to get because you got to keep in consideration that these fans are judging both hits combined and are definitely going to give that a much higher score than it should get, just because the first hit wasn't that good. Don't get me wrong, that second hit was amazing. But just because that first hit was not up to par, you would kind of hope that it wouldn't get that high of a score just because the first hit left a little bit to be desired. But again, the fans don't really know that, so they'll probably give it the lead. And it should in terms of that it was the best two-wheel move of the night. Score for Jimmy Creighton. It's an 8.669, your new meter. Again, I'm not going to complain about that. It was the best move of the night, but if you want to keep in consideration both hits, then that should not be the leader. But next up here, we have Saigon Shaker and Ryan Disher. And again, just to remind you, Tom Mentz and Max D does not come out in this two-wheel competition. He's got a blown motor, so we'll hope for him to come back and dig it up in freestyle. 
But here's Saigon Shaker, Ryan Dishroom, looking to do good things here in MetLife Stadium. His first time ever here, and he's dragging it on the tail for that first hit. I'm going to have to give that a good score of a 3.5 just because two other drivers have tried it so far. So that's going to lower it, and he didn't do it the best. And an okay second hit, I'm going to have to give that one a 1.25, which would give him a 4.75. So not the best of runs for Saigon Shaker, but you know what? That first hit was pretty solid. The second bicycle just was not up to standards, but he still did a great job. Nice to see Saigon Shaker out here performing. The seventh truck out, which means that we are now halfway through the Monster Jam two-wheel competition. So, so far, all of my scores have been underscored from the actual score, except for Kraken, which I give a 7.25. It's a 5.570, so Saigon Shaker just not going to get the win today. But next up, we have Scarlet Bandit. This is Dawn Creighton coming out here to rock it. She would love to get a huge super win. It would be her first competition win of the year. And she's sitting it on the back two wheels. Wow! Yeah. What an amazing hit for Dawn Creighton. I'm going to have to give that one a five. A beautiful first hit. Dawn Creighton getting herself really up there. She could take a lead right now if she has a spectacular second hit. You also have to keep in mind the overall talent of the driver and how they've done. If they seem to be overperforming, then you may want to boost up that score a little bit. Running up for her second hit here. And it's an underwhelming one. I'm going to have to give that a 1.5, which would give her a final total of 6.5, which is a little disappointing because she really had one amazing first hit that set her up for greatness. But she's just sadly unable to come together with victory here tonight. But you never know. These fans could give it the high score. She's got to beat her husband, Jimmy Creighton. In my opinion, I think Monster Energy had the best two hits combined, but I think Jimmy Creighton still deserves the hot seat. The score is coming in from judgeszone.com. for Dawn Creighton is going to come in right now. It's an 8.379 just shy of the lead. You can hear all the women a little disappointed by that low score. But next over here coming out ninth is son of a digger Ryan Anderson. Not too many trucks remain here in this two-wheel competition. He's going to whip it around. Looks like he's lining up for a bicycle. Whenever he goes for these bicycles, you never know what he's going to do. Just a straight up bicycle, a bicycle to a moonwalk, or some sidewalls. He's always got something up his sleeve. So we'll see what this first hit brings. Here he goes on two wheels. Bumps into the racing lane, do it in reverse. But it's unable to get the moonwalk. I'm going to have to get that with a 4.5. That was the best bicycle of the night. And he did get a little bit of a moonwalk there. So 4.5 right now is the score for Ryan Anderson with one more hit left. He can blow the doors off of this one. Still, in my opinion, the highest score from my scoring was a 7.75. He only needs a 2.75 to tie it. And he's on two wheels again. And he's going in to some sidewalls. And what a save out of Ryan Anderson and son of a digger. I'm going to have to give that a 5, which will give him a total of a 9.5 here in the 2 wheel competition. This should be our new leader. It blew away all the other competitions. One of the top 2 wheel runs of the year for Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. What an amazing year it has been for Ryan Anderson in this magical 2 wheel competition. He comes up with something to do every show and he just kills it. The score for Ryan Anderson will be coming in. A very well-deserved high score should be in the works. <laughs> if you weren't happy about that, then I don't know what you're watching, because that was spectacular. The score should take the lead. The high score is still an 8.669 from Jimmy Creighton and Bounty Hunter. 
score for Ryan Anderson and son of a digger is a 9.714, an incredibly high score. It's even higher than what I gave him. And he is your new leader going in to the last three trucks, last four trucks here in the two-wheel competition. We still have Slinger, Grave Digger, and one more truck has to be. There's Slinger, there is Grave Digger, and Jester. So we'll see what Camden Murphy can do here. He said he has something special planned for this two-wheel competition, and he's currently walking it on the nose. A beautiful moonwalk for the Dragonoid. Oh, but he's been shut off! And he's gonna roll it over. You can hear the fiberglass just cracking on that truck. I'm gonna have to give that a 4.75 just because that was not the best hit that he could have done. He got a little bit of room for improvement because he didn't walk it all the way. He's not gonna get to do that to be removed this week. He says he's gonna try it in Foxborough this weekend though, so we'll see what that can be in the commentary next weekend. But the second it just didn't exist, he couldn't have scored over a five. So it's a 7.438, very high score, but he still did his best. The one hit was nice, and it really, if he had that and did what he could have, he really could have set the bar high. So we are going to see them flip this beautiful dragon and truck over. A beautiful truck following a solid moonwalk here. Disappointing though that Camden Murphy could just not get the connection. But next up here in the two-view competition, we have Scott Hartsock in Gunslinger looking to go all out here in the two-view competition. Would love to see Scott Hartsock walk away with a win here. That would be so amazing. searching around for that first hit, whatever he wants to do, he wants it to be perfect. And it's really got to be to be what Ryan Anderson did. A solid first hit, we're going to have to give that a 1.75 for Scott Hartsock and Gunslinger. Falling up on this pad for a second hit, he's got a 1.75 to start. Which is that he can't take the lead. And that's not going to do it. I'd have to give that a 1. It would be a 2.754 Slinger, which would be the lowest score of the day. Disappointing for Scott Hartsock. You know he wanted to get a little bit of a better two-wheel run than that. Let's see what the scores are and what these MetLife fans gave to Scott Hardsock. Next up here is Tyler Meninga in Grave Digger. He really wants to get a nice run going. Wow, amazing sidewalls on two wheels the entire time. I gotta give that a five. He only had a one hit, which is why I can't give it a score higher than a five. You also did not see Chester in this video. He got a 5.020. Sorry that that was not in, but he didn't really do much anyway, which is why he wasn't. I don't know why my thing didn't download it all. I had them all on my phone. I had them all downloaded to my computer, but for some reason they just didn't all make it in. Not really sure why not. So, Son of a Digger, that's going to be with a 
That was a great run, but that should not take the lead, especially because it was only one hit. I only give it a five because he only had one hit. He's out of the truck. Those were some of the longest sidewalls in Monster Jam history. He just could not fill the run with a save there, which is too disappointing. So Gravedigger is not going to get the win. It is going to be a win for Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger as he will look to capitalize on that in the freestyle competition. So first up here in the freestyle competition is Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken. This is the first time I ever saw Nick Pagliarulo drive a Monster Jam truck. It was awesome to see him out here. So let's see what he could do here in freestyle. A really pretty truck. And it's going to kick off the freestyle with some nice air. Again, I'm judging each run at a 45 for freestyle. Nick Pagliarulo, really this beautiful Kraken body that he designed when he was just a little kid. He brought it to life this year for the Monster Jam 2019 season. And man, is it a great truck to see out competing. Nice hit there. You gotta keep in mind with scoring these competitions, the stadium, the driver, and overall, the quality of the truck is the truck working on all cylinders. And a nice bicycle attempt for Kraken. And you gotta think of doing unique things. If they do something that nobody's done so far, then that should earn them a few more points. Like this, going for a donut, a really good donut right there, could also earn him a lot of points. The truck seems to be broken, his rear steer is not working right, so you have to also consider that. And a nice stoppy for Kraken, doing a great job. He does have to throw it in reverse, but I'm not going to deduct points for that just because it's because his truck is broken. He can't really do much about it. And the truck seems to be shot. Disappointing for Kraken. I'm going to have to give that a 17 for Nick Pagliarulo. We left 24 seconds on the clock. A 17, though, is a pretty good score. Leaving 24 seconds on the clock, he had a lot of nice moves from the stoppy to some solid air, and the bicycle attempt was really cool as well. So Kraken and Nick Pagliarulo really went all out and certainly did the best that he could do. For those of you wondering, a 17 out of a 17 on the judges zone scale would be a 3.78 which would not be very high it's a 6.298 though for nick pagliarulo in kraken next up here we have mike thompson in taurus
So here is Mike Thompson, his first freestyle since driving Wrecking Crew all the way back in Minneapolis in 2017. The end of the year, he had a great show, tore it up, he tore the body off the truck. It was a great job for him. And now he is out of here freestyling this classic Taurus machine, looking for redemption after breaking the wheel off in the tubular competition. Kind of like a rental truck for him as he is driving Mike Vodders' machine. This is a Michael Vodders owned truck. Keeps knocking that jammer. Seems to not have as good of control on this truck. It's a different animal though. This Taurus is a little bit bigger than some of the other machines out there. So he's got to get used to it going to throw it into a donut, a solid attempt for him. He threw the rear steer on just to prevent it from flipping over. So again, Mike Thompson, like I said, it's his first freestyle since 2017. you got to give him a little bit of slack. Don't really want to critique him that heavily. Went for a stop. He could not quite get it. There's 43 seconds left on the clock, and he seems to just be searching around a little bit too much. Thirty seconds now on the clock, and he, wow, he just broke that truck completely. The four-link bar just completely dragging on the ground. That's the end of the run. I've got to give that a 12 for Torres. Which in the judges own scale would be a 2.667. So Taurus, Mike Thompson not going to win this competition. A little bit of a disappointing run, so I would have to give that a 2.667 on the judges own scale, which means that Kraken is still your leader after I gave him a 12. I mean after I give him a 17. So we'll see what the scores are going to be. It should not take the lead. Coming in, the scores for Taurus it is a 5.187. Not going to be enough. Next up, we have Cynthia Gautier in the Monster Mutt Dalmatian. Coming out third in freestyle. Surprising to see her coming out so early. She's coming out announcing her presence with some solid air. Wow, some more big air right off the bat. She's throwing this Dalmatian truck around this beautiful ice. Dalmatian should be competing in the All-Star Challenge in October in this beautiful truck. Can't wait to see her there. Her first time driving at MetLife Stadium. She made it noted. She noted that last year she was a part of the track dirt building company. She built the track last year and now she's driving on the track this year in this down nation. The puppy getting to drive wild here in MetLife Stadium. She's really risen as one of the top drivers in the sport. She's so good at what she does. I said that's one of the pit party. We said not only are you one of the female aside, she's just one of the best drivers, period. She's so good. And she's proving it big time here with some huge air. She is really going on the ragged edge. She's got 32 seconds left. She's going for the back foot here. Cynthia Gautier in Montserrat Dalmatian. Wow. 
so a great hit for Cynthia Gautier. She's going to have one more hit left for her scores. And oh my, on the front two wheels, she's going to roll her over. That Dalmatian is going to end up on its lid. I got to give that a 31 for the Monster Mutt Dalmatian, which in judges zone would only be a 6.889, but a 31 is a really, really high score. I'm not even going to give you what the, the fan judging score would be for that because that's not really fair. A 31 is a nice score and that is well deserved for Cynthia Gautier setting the bar high. Coming out third, that only gives the rest of the drivers 14 points to work with. We'll see what the scores are for Cynthia Gautier. So Crack is the lead with a 6.298. We'll see if this puppy can take the lead. It's a 9.508. Wow. That is so high. That is incredibly high. My dad riding, <laughs> riding on the top too high. It was a great run at a 9.508. That's just... That's unacceptable, I'm sorry. But if you gave that that high of a score, then you really, please don't judge, please. Just, uh, Cynthia had a phenomenal run and you just ruined it with that score. She tore the doors off, a well-deserved leader with a 31, but a 9.50 weight, that's, that's preposterous. But up here we've got Scott Hartsock in Gunslinger. He is really trying to throw down with a, no, a really high score of a 9.508. It's going to be a hard to beat, but you never know. Scott Hartsock's cock locked and ready to rock at your MetLife Stadium. And just to clear things up for Cynthia Gautier, it was an amazing run, and it has by far been the best run of the night. The question is, will that stay the best one of the night if she wins? The question is, will she deservedly win? I don't care if she wins with the best one with the high score. I just wish that the score was a little lower, as that could affect the rest of the run. These drivers may try to do too much to beat that high of a score and flip over too early. But again, it's a well-deserved lead. She deserved the lead. I gave her a 31. So good for Cynthia. She tore it up in MetLife Stadium. She's got a lot to be proud of. She's got such a bright future ahead of her. Right now, Scott Hortsox dancing out here on the track. He's trying to slingshot himself to the lead. Nice little combo from the air to the slap, really. Some solid air. So the time is winding down, only 15 seconds left. Scott's got to do something huge if he really wants to take this lead. He's got zero seconds left. That is the end of his run. A good run for Gunslinger. This is Scott Hartsock's first time here at MetLife Stadium, and he's just going to keep going for the fans. He's enjoying his time out here in MetLife. you got to give it up for Scott Hartsock in Gunslinger. A really great run. He tore it up, and he did a great job. We'll see what the scores come in as. That is only the fourth truck out, meaning that there are 10 trucks left given that Tom Mentz and Jimmy Creighton can return. But it's going to be a 4.980 for Scott Hartsock in Gunslinger. Next up here, we have Saigon Shakers, Ryan Desheru. He is off and running with some solid air right off the bat. Really giving it some hammerage out here. He wants that lead. 
Wow! He's really going all out! He wants this win and he's really making a good push for it. Some huge air so far in this run. Would love to see him go for a backflip too. And a nice combo to the slap wheelie. That doesn't get seen very much, so that's pretty cool. He is going to back it up here for the jump. But because he didn't hit it on that hit, I got it to duck two points. But he is the first driver to hit the jammer. And a wide bounce for Saigon Shaker. A nice save. Oh boy, going right towards the stands, the engine pops, and it's another big save. You can see that on the right side of the screen, good friend, Fast and Furious of the program. His name's Fast and Furious on YouTube, you can go follow him. But Saigon Shaker getting a score of a 20 in my boat, that's just not going to be good enough for the lead. It was great though, that's good enough for second place. So 20 he had two really good saves with that backup cost of two points. He would have had a 22 if it weren't for doing that. But two really nice saves, took a lot of skill, but the truck broke way too early for him to have a chance. He's averaging a 6.881 this year in freestyle, which is pretty good. That's not that bad, you've got to give him a little bit of credit. We'll see what the score is. He's got to be a 9.50 rated. Should not take the lead. It's an 8.031. It's a good score. I have to say, it was a really good score and a well deserved nice clap for Saigon Shaker. That truck is really destroyed. He did a real justice to it in that freestyle, but he gave the fans a good time. We were on our feet and we were really happy. But they're gonna park it right there, which means we got a little bit of a roadblock in front of us, which is really kind of aggravating, but it's all right. So up here we have Don Green and Scarlet Banda coming out sixth. We are almost halfway through this freestyle competition. And Cynthia Gautier sitting pretty in that hot seat. And Tor Creighton starting herself off right, right with that jammer. So Don Creighton, as you may have forgotten, came in second place in the 2008 Monster Jam World Finals Freestyle Competition was only one point shy of Adam Anderson's winning freestyle total with her huge save. She has not been in the World Finals for a long time. I believe that may have been her last or second to last. But she's got a good run going so far. She's actually getting some pretty good air. Her momentum's pretty good. Halfway through her run. And a little bit on the ragged edge too. Don't freeze and throw the bandits really throwing down. Time is winding down. She is getting a good run putting together though, but her rear right planet area is locked up. That is going to hurt her a lot. That will impact her scores for sure. And really all you can do with this is do donuts. Speak to the devil. That's what she's going to do right now. A really nice donut there for Dawn Creighton. And I think she is going to call it quits after that. A great run for Dawn Creighton and Scarlet Bandit. I got to give that a 16 for Dawn Creighton. She tore up the truck and the track. It was a good showing for Dawn Creighton.
We'll see what the fans gave it at JudgesZone.com, but I give it a 16, which should not take the lead. So let's see what the scores are. Again, Cynthia Gauthier has been in the hot seat for now. Three trucks, including Scarlett Bandit. She is hoping to stay there. It's going to be a 6.536 for Scarlett Bandit. But next up here, we have Monster Energy. This is Cody Saucier. He is off and running. Cody would love nothing more than to get this freestyle win. He has been stuck in arenas all year long. He wants to prove to the uppers, uh, the upper levels of fell that he belongs in these stadiums for a long time. They also recently put out the top 10 drivers right now that are for the voting that would be in if it ended today. Cody Saucier would be a part of that top 10, as would Cam McQueen and Charlie Parker, and those are two other notables that I saw. All right now, a great run from Cody, the best run so far. He's going for it, really a good run he's put it together. Go for a little bit of a bicycle too. And going right into a donut, that is also creative. So Cody, he's got to pick up the pace just a little bit more here though. He is on pace to take the lead, but with a 9.5018 as your leader, it's not going to be easy to take down. Oh, yeah. oh and he's going to go into a moonwalk. That is really nice. A great move for Cody Saltier. He's making a real push, but as time's winding down, he's got to squeeze in a backflip in the time if he wants to take that lead. More really big air. It's backflip time, Cody. You gotta get it. He's there. He's gotta punch the gas. But he's backing up, and the time is up. So this doesn't count towards his scoring. His scores are in. Oh my! He just threw it into a moonwalk. The bouncy guy put him into a moonwalk. What a hit from Cody, but it's got to come after the time. So Cody went all out, but that's not going to count. And he's going to come out of his truck while it's running, surfing it like we used to see in the old days. Man, it's awesome to see that coming back. What a night for Cody Saucier in Monster Energy. But this does not deserve the lead. I gotta give that a 25, which would not take the lead from the 31 that Cynthia Gauthier got. A great run, but he did not squeeze in that backflip to Moonwalk in the time, which is really disappointing. So the score shouldn't take the lead, but again, the fans aren't considering this. They think that that counts towards the scoring. So. This should take the lead because the fans don't really understand how to judge, so this deserves the lead in that sense, but in reality, a professional judge wouldn't give this the lead. It's only a 9.127, so the fans really failing big time because we know that that's not good. And the girls behind me were cheering when that got a low score. That's another red flag. If you're cheering that that didn't take the lead, then please go home. But up next, we have Iron Warrior. This is Matt Cody's first stadium freestyle since a few years ago. This is a nice opportunity for him to prove his willingness to be a top driver in Monster Jam. And starting right off, that's some nice air. That's his presence a little bit. Let's go, Matt Cody. Some more solid air. You gotta like this, Matt Cody. Two really good hits at the beginning of his run. And he's just going hit to hit, back to back. You gotta like that. Keeping the flow up, going one hit to the next. That's gonna increase his scores a little bit. 
And he's doing it with some thunder. He's getting some nice air. No pun intended. They cur a typically blue thunder driver. He's really airing it out. I got to say, Matt Cody's doing a nice job here at MetLife Stadium. A really underrated run to this point. He's getting nice hits, a lot of hits. This may be the most hits we've actually seen in a run to this point. But he's just not getting the elevation and wow moments that we're searching for in the scoring. But again, continuing to just go. Nice hits, flowing well. It's a good run for Matt Cody right now. A lot to be proud of. And a nice little combo into a wheelie. He's making a push. If he does a backflip, he may take the lead. But the time is winding down. He's really got to step it up if he wants to lock in that lead. I don't think this will take the lead at this point. He let off a little bit. Just let off a little too much here at the end, which will probably cost him. But he looks like he may be lining up for it. No, he's not. He pulls away from the backflip. So the scores are in. This is just for the fans. Huge air, though, right at the end of his run. So Matt Cody and I are more a pretty good run, I must say. I gave that the fourth highest score of the night. That's pretty well deserved. So let's see what the scores are for Iron Warrior. It's not going to take the lead, it's a 5.423. So again, next up here we have Matt Pagliarulo and Jesser. Again, I'm sorry for the audio issues. Just the, the GoPro does this sometimes where it muffles out some stuff. I don't really know why, but you could hear it just, it muffles everything, which is kind of disappointing because it takes away from the excitement of the run. But well, it doesn't really change the fact that it's still going to be cool to watch. You're going to enjoy Matt Pagliarulo out here in Chester. But I'm just, I don't know why it does this, but it does. So hopefully it doesn't last for a very long time. It definitely takes away from the overall vibe of the run, though, which is disappointing. I mean, you like to hear the trucks. It's one of my favorite parts of the show. Seems like he may be having some rear steer issues. He is indeed. So him and his son both struggled with rear steer issues here in the freestyle competition. But whatever he does with this truck with rear steer being gone, you've got to give him a little bit of extra props for that. This will also really kill his opportunity to do a backflip, which you would love to see out of Matt Pagliarulo. But it's just not going to get the job done in the truck again, just really having problems here. So just really unable to get the job done. It's disappointing for Matt Pagliarulo. But he is still trying to make something happen here with a broken truck. And a nice little slap wheelie. Yeah, it's just not really going well for Matt Pagliarulo here. This will be his last hit of the run. He's going to cross-thread that jump, which will get him another extra point here. I'm going to have to give that a 17 for Matt Pagliarulo in Jester. You're not going to hear any more audio, which is kind of disappointing. It's all muffled like this for the rest of the run. So I might as well just tell you what the score is now because I've got it next to me. It's a 5.626. So a solid score. I gave it a... 
I'm sorry, I gave it a 17, which is really not terrible. But Matt Pagley Rulo just truck problems for both of the trucks at Tom Fuller Motorsports. A little disappointing. Next up, he's returning from the grave. It's Jimmy Creedon and Bounty Hunter. He had an amazing two-wheel run, but he broke the truck quite heavily. And he is now out here ready to freestyle. This is going to be your 10th truck out. It makes me smile hearing him say the reigning World Finals Racing Champion. I think they're going to enjoy saying that for a long time. I know I am. Until next year, whenever the World Finals is, I am going to enjoy saying that. He is off right now, though. A little bit of a spider crawl over that first hit. It sounds like it's still having issues in its rear left wheel. Is not spinning, so clearly the issues for Jimmy Creighton's truck have not been fixed. There's also some smoke coming out of the truck. That's disappointing. You really love to see a great run. We've only seen two backflips, but only one is counted towards the scoring tonight. going to turn it into the side of that broken wheel. It's getting some cyclones. Wow. What a donut. Uh, Jimmy Creighton, that's the best donut of the night. That was spectacular. That seems like he's having rear steering issues. Just the third truck with rear steer problems. Oh no, he straightened it out. But still, uh, the third truck really with some blaring issues coming out here. That's really disappointing. But Jimmy I give a pass to because he was already broken coming into the competition. They just had to get the truck fixed. Oh boy, he doesn't want to back up, but he has to. A rough break for Jimmy Creighton there. Watch out, he almost ran into Saigon Shaker, but that's another point deduction for Jimmy. It's a tough break. You know he wants to do well, but the truck's just holding him back. And another cyclone. This truck has some horsepower to it. This thing really gets some sick donuts. So the clock will be paused right now for Jimmy Creighton and Bounty Hunter. For me, the lowest score right now is a 12 from Torres. You don't want to be sitting with the lowest score right now. I have three trucks with a 17 right now, too. I really don't think Jimmy's going to refire. That truck is just broken. But we'll see. You never know. He may refire, but I think that if he does, it probably won't last. He has refired, and a little bit of flames came out of the exhaust when he turned the truck on. I really don't think he's going to get to run, though. He can't even move the truck. Yeah, sadly, that's just going to be the end of the run for Jimmy Creighton yeah, in Bounty Hunter. He's going to get a 5.981, a rough break for Jimmy Creighton in Bounty Hunter. The 10th oh, the truck out in your defending racing champion is not going to get a freestyle win today. But next up here, we have the black and green wrecking machine. You know what that sound means, that it's great to time. And it's Tyler Meninga getting out here to freestyle. He has not had a full freestyle run in the stadium in his career. He said it to be in the pit party. He hopes to break the curse tonight. But the stadium curse has lived all the way up to MetLife Stadium. Every freestyle in the stadium has been cut more than halfway through his run a little short. And on two wheels. And he's going to pull it through. A nice mini save there for Gravedigger. He's off to a good start and some huge air. But oh, that front left wheel is broken. And that's the end of the run for Gravedigger. It is an 11 from my book for Gravedigger. It's a rough break. And the final score is going to be a 7.372, which is really, really high. I don't know how you give that a 7.372. It's tied for the worst score. It's a rough break. That mini save and big air, but the curse will continue for Grave Digger. Rough break. 
Tyler Menegas just can't get out of that rut. Next up here in the freestyle competition is Kenton Murphy and the Bakugan Dragonoid. Two trucks remain here in the freestyle competition. It'll be Tom Metz and Max D, followed by Ryan Anderson in Son of a Thinker, all looking to knock off. Cynthia Gautier sits at the 9.508, Nike for a 31 out of 45, and that is stuck to this point in the night. I said that the score was high, but if it still is the best one and my highest score of the night, then it's okay. Kendra Murphy and the Bakugan Dragon would love to knock her out of the hot seat. Right now, not tons going on. He's just trying to feel out this track. Wow, really nice air there for Camden. But so far, not a ton going on for the Dragon on truck. Looks yes. like he's lining up for the mini flip. He's going for the mini flip and he lands it. He got the mini flip. That is huge. Candy Murphy and the Bakugan Dragonoid going for broke here in freestyle. And more big air. He wants it. He can take the lead right now. Wow! Huge air for the Bakugan Dragonoid going over and the truck is destroyed. I got to give that a 26. What a run for Camden Murphy. It shouldn't take the lead, but an amazing time. He left 25 seconds on the clock, which is the only reason why he's not going to get the chance to win here. A 26 is good. But again, not enough to take the lead away. I gave Cynthia a 31. That, can't, that meant that he was just five points shy. So disappointing. But Camden Murphy had a great run going. Just not enough to fully finish it off. We'll see what the scores are. Though The fans could end up giving him the high score. But I'm going to be honest. It does not deserve the lead. We'll see what the scores are. The score to beat the truck is demolished again for the second straight so show for that Dragonoid. Yeah. It's a 9.088. You know what? He didn't deserve the lead. It's okay. He had a great run, just not quite enough to take that lead. But next up here, we have some more audio issues right here in the beginning of the run. But it's going to be Tom Mentz and Max D. Hopefully, they don't last very long. But Tom Mentz coming out here to freestyle. He is looking for some redemption after not even being able to compete in the Monster Jam two-wheel competition. So again, audio issues. Man, I hate when it does this. It always happens at least once in the night and it's just so aggravating because it shouldn't so Tom Mentz hopefully up oh, and the audio issues return oh and they're back so you know what you just gotta live with it I'm sorry I can't I can't control it but right now Tom Mentz and Max D would love to get a huge win out here in the freestyle competition he is going for broke out here. He broke in the racing competition. He has not competed since the first round of racing. And now the audio is just gone. So he's lining up for his first hit. And Tom Menson, Max D, is full sending it right off the bat here in MetLife Stadium. Looks like the audio is going to return for the rest of the run, though, which is very nice. Wow, really big air, but it's just like the engine's popping just a little bit. But 
but he's also a good star. Tom wants this win. Oh, he sounds like he's having some transmission issues, but huge air for Tom Menton, Max D. More big air, but he's definitely having some transmission issues. And no, the audio goes away once more. Man, this is so aggravating. But he's lining up for some huge air. He's ready to go. Some more big air for Tom Menton, Max D. Man, the stupid audio problems. I don't know why it does this. It's starting to happen, and it's happening a lot longer than it used to. It used to be briefly, but now it's happening a lot. Yeah, he's having some serious transmission issues, though, which is the only problem right now. Tom Mentz may not be able to complete a backflip because the transmission is hurting him a lot. You're going to hear right there. The transmission is going to rest in the dirt. And yeah, he's trying to turn it around for the jump, but his transmission is gone. That's going to be the end of the run for Tom Menton, Max D. I got to give that a 20. I knew it was coming for a while, but he blew an engine and a transmission. Some huge motor problems for Tom Mentz. A tough break in Max D. That's going to be a 20 for Tom. A rough break for him. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he can come back out in this next show this weekend and tear it up. But Tom Mentz in Max D. Fire really hoping that that will not be the end of his consistent season because he's had a great year so far but truck problems are really horrible and once you get them it seems very hard to stop them so hopefully he can cut them right out. So we'll see if he can take the lead here. So the score is not going to take the lead. It's a 7.5. Four, six. So a tough break for Tom Mentz in Max D. But last but not least is Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger. It's going to be up to him to take the lead. The score to beat in my books at 31 and the score to beat in the actual shows at 9.508. So he's got to beat a 31 in my book. It's not very difficult for Ryan Anderson to beat a 31. But if truck problems bite him, then it's going to bite his scoring and it's going to affect his chances of winning. So... Hopefully Ryan Anderson goes all out and gets a huge win. But Ryan Anderson right now running up and certainly Cynthia Gauthier has got to be shaking a little bit in that hot seat because he's ready to send it over the jammer, jammer time at the beginning of the run. Ryan Anderson seems dialed in from the first five seconds of his run. Wow! Big air! He is really, he is something else. This kid is the future of Monster Jam. He's the best driver, in my opinion, in Monster Jam history. It's just incredible what he can do. Absolutely phenomenal. Wow. He just, he goes all out. He puts his foot to the floor. He doesn't care if he gets hurt. He wants these fans to get a good show. His truck is misfiring just a little bit too, which could cause a little bit of a problem. Wow, some more big air, but oh boy, a wild ride. The Ryan Anderson's going to put him on his lid, and with 50 seconds left on the clock, that is not going to take the lead. I got to give that a 19 for Ryan Anderson, which should not take the lead. So sadly, Ryan Anderson cut down really way too short and cut down a tire. So Cynthia Gauthier should be your freestyle winner today. And we'll see. We'll see if the fans will blow this score up. But there's, there's no way that this should take the lead. Cynthia's a girl and she did have the best run. So there's no way that this isn't that this is going to win. But nonetheless, a great run for Ryan. He was making a big push. But an awkward angle after the hit cost him a wheel and a run. The score coming in. Yeah. 
It's an 8.673, and people are outraged. I don't know why. It was a good run, but you know what? He did his best, and he went really hard. So congratulations to Cynthia Gautier. Let's hear her speak. Well, Cynthia, obviously really happy about that one. You've got to be happy for her. She certainly tried her best, and she did put down the best run. I gave her a 31, which was good enough to take the lead and the win at the end of the day. Not the best of freestyle competitions. These drivers went all out, but we only had four trucks that scored above a tw well that scored a 20 or above. It was the Monster Mutt Dalmatian, Saigon Shaker, Monster Energy. And then it was a Dragonoid and Max D. So actually that's six. But you know what? It was a fun time. I had a lot of fun out there at MetLife. I actually think it was five. I had a lot of fun out at MetLife. And I can't really complain. It was an amazing time. Saw a lot of great people. Thank you everybody for watching. And we will see you next time. Tell me that you love me, even if it's